Hey guys, what's going on? Today, I'm going to talk about just kind of a channel update. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about uh, the upcoming 400 subscriber giveaway. It's going to be my next giveaway. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the questions you guys asked in my video about let's make this your channel. And yeah, and just kind of what's going on and what videos are coming up. Um, so you can see what's going on. I got to keep content going out there. So let's do that by making more videos. Sometimes my videos might not be about anything. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, so 400 subscriber giveaway. I'm going to give away two knives on that. I think, oh, well, I know one for sure I'm going to give away. Is this one right here? And this is the CJRB Pyrite. I just don't like it. And I'm not way there's some knives that everybody thinks popular that I just don't like. Um, and this is one of them. I can't stand the thumb studs. They're too pointy, at least on this one. For me, anyway. A lot of guys really like this knife and think it's awesome. It is a good knife. Like, the handle's great. The action's great. The button lock's great. But um, I'm just kind of finicky, and those thumb studs bother me. This is the package you get it in, so... Anyway, that's coming, 400 subscribers. And then I think I'm gonna give away a traditional knife. And I actually really like this traditional knife, but that's okay, I'm, I'm, I already don't hardly use the ones I got, so I don't need more. And that's this one, that's the Coal Miner series um, by Rough Rider, RR. I'll show you the knife. And this is basically what I, how I got it. I don't know what happened to the little plastic sleeve, but I'll wrap it up in something before I put it in there. And as you can see, the centering isn't great on it, but it is actually a pretty stinking nice traditional knife for the price. Let's see if you can see what kind of steel that is. 440 razor sharp. So I don't know if that's 440A, 440C, 440 whatever, but um, probably 440C. Uh, it is pretty dang sharp. Let's do. A, I have one of my uh, guys on my video ask me to do more paper cutting tests. Uh, let's see. It's not bad. I'll do a review of it. Hopefully before then. And we'll get a look at it. It's a sway back, obviously, with a cotton sampler blade on it, kind of. Uh, whatever, sheep's foot blade. And then a pin blade, which is actually really big for a pin blade. But anyway, not bad. Not bad. So that's going to be my next giveaway. And I'm going to do it a little different. I think I'm going to do it on comments. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, what else is going on? Uh, some of the other questions I was asked about, do more fixed blade reviews? Okay, I'll do that. Probably my next one's going to be on this, the Mora knife. Uh, these are like $45 now. I paid 20 bucks for this thing, brand spanking new. <laughs> uh, either I've had it longer than I thought, or prices are going crazy. I'm thinking some more prices. And I'm going to do a sharpening video on sharpening a Scandi grain. Let's get a piece of paper out real quick. People want to see me cut paper. Uh, that's me. So, it'll cut curly cues. Zero grind, Scandi grain. I love it. One of my favorite knives. Uh, that's the, and that's the stainless one, so it's some kind of a Sandvik. I don't know, 12, C24, whatever the numbers are. Uh, someone else asked me, can I do a video on finding the most knife you can get for the money, the best budget knife, whatever. Um, and I do have one already picked out for doing that video, and it's this one right here. It's the Senelox. This was less than $25. Yes, that is actual real carbon fiber. It is not a sticker. Zoom in and I'll show you how you can kind of tell the difference between that and G10. See those layers? That is real carbon fiber. And as you can see, it goes all the way through. And those aren't stickers. I was really surprised. Um, 
Comes with a little filler tab, which is fit pretty crappily. <laughs> but for 25 bucks, I mean, I don't know. Deep carry somewhat clip that wasn't put up high enough. Red pivot collar, super skinny liner on the liner lock. D2 steel blade, ball bearings. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's a $25 knife that you can buy off Amazon. Uh, there's actually a cheaper one. There's cheaper ones. There's one on Blade HQ I seen the other day for $1.99. I should have threw it in the cart and bought one, but I didn't. So anyway, so I'm going to do a video about that. I had someone else ask me, can I do a video of more budget blades that aren't made in China? <sighs> budget blades that aren't made in China. Well, that's a tough one. Because there just isn't a lot of budget steel blades that aren't, or budget knives that aren't made in China. There's some that are made in Italy that are okay. There's some that are made, uh, there's not really anything in the United States that I could say that I could recommend as a budget blade. I don't know. I'm going to check out some of Gerber's new stuff. Uh, Kershaw's got some new stuff that's pretty nice, but it's made in China as well. Um... I don't know, there just isn't. Everything's over a hundred bucks. And for me, budget blade is like uh, 70 bucks or less. So this is made in Italy. This is a fantastic knife for the money. In my opinion, uh, cold steels are made in Taiwan. I did get someone ask a question about this knife. This is the Formax Scout made in Taiwan by cold steel, OS 10A. Um, I've never used it. I have sharpened it. It's very sharp. I need to get it out. Uh, something else I was asked a bunch of times is, could I do a sharpening video? And yes, I'm going to do a sharpening video. I'm going to do it on this knife right here. This is Elmac steel. It's super thin, so it shouldn't take too long. And Elmac is kind of tough to sharpen, but it's not terrible, terrible. Uh, there's a lot worse out there. K390, try sharpening that. Try sharpening, uh, 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 Maximilt, that stuff's terrible. Maximit, whatever I call it, Maximilt, that stuff's terrible. Um, let's see what else was brought up. Uh, I think that's about it. There's a lot of repeat questions about sharpening, uh, restoring knives, uh, showing older knives. Budget knives made in the United States, budget knives made in other countries besides China, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I will try to fulfill all those needs. There is also audio, so I'm trying to concentrate on making sure my voice is loud enough. Um, I don't have really a microphone plug-in on my phone to record videos with, but maybe in the future if I get an actual camera, I can do that. Um, so if I get quiet, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't yell at your phone too much when you're watching me. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I'm gonna do a video on my tools for disassembling and assembling knives. Um, I still have a bunch of videos to do about edge retention and things like that that I plan on doing. I plan on doing a video on knife steels. And I don't know if I wanna do each individual steel gets its own little short video. Or if I just want to go through a whole bunch of them and just kind of rate each one, give them a number like 1 to 10 and give them a rating or something. I don't know. I don't know. You can help me with that. That'd be a good one for you to answer. Can you spend three minutes on one steel? I mean, some of them I can. M390. I could probably spend three or four minutes talking about it. It's great steel. Durable. Very rust resistant. Sharp is fairly easy. Takes an incredible edge. Um... So some of them I need to learn more about this corrupt stuff. Uh, I need to learn more about it. It's a German made four something stainless 416, I think it's called something like that. Made by Krupp. Uh, Aus 10, I still need to learn more about. D2, I already know a bunch about. This is, oh yeah, I want to talk about this knife. Um, this is the Perpetua. This is a mass drop knife. This is a Nitro V. 
Um, this is actually an American made kind of a budgety knife, but it's definitely got some issues to it. Um, the crossbar lock on is not the greatest. It's not the smoothest as you can see. It probably needs cleaned up. Uh, I used to use it a lot and then I realized that I kept on getting chipping, right? See if I can zoom in. Sorry, my fingers are gross from work. Uh, right there. See that little chip right there at the end of my thumbnail? That happens to line up with that right there. <laughs> yeah, it hits it. If you close it really hard, you hit it. Really frustrating. Really frustrating. American made knife. I don't remember the knife company. It's in Idaho. Um, just not great. Like you should do better than that. QC should be better than that. Otherwise, you know, it's ground good and everything. Everything else about it's okay. Um, Nitro V is not super stain resistant. Like people say, at least not this version anyway, if it is even Nitro V, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to do a video about that. And I think that's about it. That's about 11 minutes of me rambling on. Still got to do videos about these. So on and on and on it goes. And like I said, 400 subscriber giveaway is coming fast. So be ready. And like I said, it's going to be one of those ones where you're going to have to comment in a video, I think. And then I'll pick one of the comments or two of the comments. And the two I pick will be winners. So think about it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great, fantastic weekend. Um, get your family together, turn off the television, get out and enjoy the outdoors. Toad Sticker out.